Today, I'm gonna show you the hack every engineering firm is looking for. Engineering data is absolutely everywhere. Drawings, calculations, memos, codes, you name it. But here's the problem. None of them talk to each other and they're very hard to contain. Today, I'm gonna show you how we can fix that using something called a knowledge graph, a system that connects information together to create real transparency and make decisions easier to follow, and how tools like LangGraph make building them very easy and then leveraging them even easier. My name is James Hinsberger and I'm co-founder of Cydian. I've spent 100 plus hours understanding how this format is strong for engineering applications and understanding the intricacies of how it relates to our data. And I'm actually creating an application with this baked in. While dealing with my clients, I've realized that one of the absolute biggest barriers to progress isn't lack of data. It's a lack of connection between the data and understanding what is going on behind the scenes. And that's exactly what knowledge graphs solve. So in this video, we'll cover three things. First, what a knowledge graph is and why it's super powerful for engineering. Second, a quick look at LangGraph, the tool we'll use to build one. And then third and finally, a demo in Google Colab where we will create a knowledge graph that shows the relationships between components of a structure all from a simple text description. So first things first, what is a knowledge graph and why does it matter for engineers? A knowledge graph is a way to represent data as connections instead of isolated pieces. It uses nodes and edges. So the nodes are like a circle and they're actual data points. So it could be a building code, it could be your memos, your internal documents, your drawings. And then the edges are how that data relates. So let's say a node is your project information and then the edges are how the calcs, the drawings all relate to one another. These are more cumbersome to make and maintain than a common raw row and column database. But with LLM interactions recently improving, it is becoming much easier to make and now it's becoming much more prevalent. Huge topic of conversation. It's like a map of relationship between entities. This beam belongs to this frame, this drawing references this code, this memo explains this calculation. In other words, knowledge graphs show how things relate, not just what they are. And that transparency is absolute golden for engineering. You can trace how a design decision was made, how an AI application is coming up with these decisions and how data is being used to provide answers to you. If you're interested, Neo4j is a great place to begin with these knowledge graphs. So now second, LangGraph. Now that you have an idea of what a knowledge graph is, let's talk about LangGraph. LangGraph is an open framework that allows you to build graph bases. And it's actually a system in Python that can be used to orchestrate a pipeline essentially. So I won't get too deep into the weeds. We'll show some visuals to explain the difference between a sequential procedure versus a parallel procedure. The way I like to describe it is Christmas lights. So like with electricity, electricity can flow in parallel or in series or sequence. So if it's in series, that means it's just running all in one line. And if one light bulb goes out, all of them go out versus in parallel. If one light bulb goes out, all the other lights are still on because the electricity can flow a different route. And that's essentially what Lang graph is. There's also something called Lang chain, which is more of the series basis. So think of Lang graph, like giving your LLM, your AI assistant, a memory and a structure. So instead of just answering questions, it can understand context and how pieces of information connect to each other and you have more control over what to build. So the intricacies can be matched. Engineering is very complex. So you can use this system to really create something that matches the complexity of the domain we are in. Now we're going to go to a demo building a structural knowledge graph using LangGraph that maps the relationships between components in a structure. So all we'll need to do is provide a description of a st structure, something like a building with four columns supporting two beams and essential slab. The slab connects to each beam and each beam rests on two columns. Then our system will convert this description into a visual representation of how all of the structural components connect. This is not actually something I've provided to a client. This is just a hypothetical to show you what a knowledge graph is and how LangGraph can be used to model complex workflows. But hypothetically, it could be used for training young engineers, teaching them how systems relate and how things connect to one another. Without further ado, let's jump into Colab and I'll show you exactly step-by-step step how this looks. 
All right, let's jump into Google Colab and get after this. So here we can see the script for our knowledge graph creation using LangGraph. First things first, we got to install LangGraph, LangChain, a few different requirements into this notebook. So it's going to run its thing. And once you get that green check mark, we're good. Now we do our required imports. So these, like I said last week with the rag demo, these are just the requirements, the functions we're going to use to allow us to essentially complete the task we're after. Once again, do not use your, do not make your API keys public because someone can take your money. Next, we are going to embed a few different terms. Realistically, if you wanted to make this solution much larger scale, you could either feed it documents or much, much more definitions. But for our purposes, we're going to embed with text embedding three small from OpenAI, which once again, like we talked about last week, converts text into vectorized format so that the system can retrieve that information in multi-dimensional space. Now, this is where the real, real fun part happens. This is where the real work goes down. This is defining the knowledge graph right here. So you can see it's a bit longer. We'll go through step by step. And then while running, it's going to be super quick. So here, first, we're going to parse the description. So when I ask a question to the system, the first function we're going to trigger is understanding what the user has asked. So breaking the question down here, you can see it's, let's say there was a question about five story reinforced concrete frame with shear walls that has a map foundation with wind loads and live loads applied. This parse description would extract each individual component. And this later is going to be used to create the nodes and then relationships are going to be drawn between them. And then we're using GPT 4.0 mini and we won't dive too deep into what's happening here. We're creating a JSON, which is just a file structure for the text, which these type of systems like next we're finding the relationship. So understanding the relationship between that parsed information. So determine how they relate to each other structurally return only once again, a JSON array and here, the five star reinforced concrete frame to map foundation relation supported by. So the five star reinforced concrete frame is supported by a map foundation. That's kind of what we're doing. And this is going to be used to create those edges like we were talking about. So the nodes are connected to each other by edges. Once again, this is just structuring how the output will be formed. And we're using GPT 4 mini cheap, quick. You can adjust it if you'd like, but that's what we're doing. Now we're going to build the graph. So once the nodes are described and understood through the parsing and the relationship is understood through the previous function I just described, now we can actually build the graph. And that is using a visual representative like an XDI graph. So it's literally just creating the graph. And then here we're going to visualize how it's actually going to be portrayed. So this is just literally describing the size of the nodes different spacing requirements and whatnot. So it's not a huge deal. And then here's where everything connects. So at the bottom of the script here, you can see graph equals state graph is structure state. And then now we have, so that the top line is describing the state of the graph breakdown. And then we have the node. So parse and the parse node is using parse underscore description. And that is the first function we describe parse description. Then, relate find relations so relate is the term and find relations is actually the function that we described above and then the build build graph is the last function finally we add the edges so we just define the nodes and then the edges are how they relate so parse connects to relate so first we parse the user's query once each component of the question that the user or prompt the user provides is broken up then we relate how they connect to each other. The next connection is basically relate to build. So once the nodes are created from the parse and the relationship between those nodes are defined in relate, then we are actually going to build the graph. So here we're literally defining how everything connects. And then finally, we are going to go ahead and run this thing. This is where the um, fun part comes up. So here, I've written down four different prompts we can provide. So we're going to this one, as you saw in the descriptions is pretty similar to 
So like in the prompts, I was kind of using this initial one as like the example. So this should provide a good response. So here is where we actually view the graph. So we'll see, we have the viewport, five story reinforced concrete frame supported by the map foundation, shear walls, transfer loads to the map foundation, map foundation supports shear walls, live loads applied to the five story reinforced concrete frame and wind loads. However, wind loads hypothetically should be applied to the shear walls. So that is an error right there. What happens though, if we change the models to GPT-5? Because GPT-5, remember, is smarter than GPT-4.0. It's trained on more parameters. So let's see if that actually does anything. I believe that's all of them. So we'll rerun it. Now we will provide the same, I believe I probably should have it copied still. Provide the same question. Now GPT-5 is gonna go to work and we're gonna see if the relationships are stronger, weaker, the same. Honestly, um, we're gonna find out together. So she's thinking, she's thinking going to understand the relationships. Here are a few other prompts I'll provide. Maybe this will be the next one we'll ask. I'll just get it ready. It's really, it's taking a while. 49 seconds, that's not great. But let's see if it gets stronger. There we go. So now the wind load, shear walls resist wind load and wind load is a, so this relationship is better now, actually. Shear walls are part of the five-star reinforced concrete frame. Live loads applied here, supported by. So you can see this actually is a better representation of what's going on. So literally just changing the model helped us out a lot. And now let's ask one more question. Let's go to the three-span continuous pre-stressed concrete bridge with elastometric bearings supported by reinforced concrete piers and abutments subject to traffic loads and temperature effects. So as you saw in my prompts, I didn't provide anything with respect to this. So we're going, going much more zero shot learning. It doesn't really have any examples to feed off of. And we're going to see how well the system does. Bear with how slow it is. Okay, it loaded up. And now we're going to run this for the viewing. So once again, three span continuous pre-stressed concrete bridge, traffic loads are applied to it, temperature effects applied to it. So now this bridge is supported by elastometric bearings, which are supported by reinforced concrete abutments, also supported by reinforced concrete piers, the bearings, and then they're all part of the bridge. So that is also a fairly decent description and this could be a learning tool. So. I actually haven't really monetized this. So anyone out there looking for a solution to go after, make it much better than this. This was just a quick demo, but um, could be an idea. So there you have it. Pretty basic application, but I hope you get the gist. Knowledge graphs aren't just a fancy visualization. They're the bridge between disconnected data and intelligent systems. If this excites you, make sure to hit like and subscribe. I post weekly videos showing how AI is being applied to real engineering workflows from document retrieval to graph-based reasoning, covering all spectrums. And I'm sure if you are interested in this type of topic, you will really enjoy it. So knowledge graphs give us transparency, traceability, and insight. Land graph gives us the tools to build them, leverage them for complex systems like engineering. And we're integrating this same concept into our flagship product mantle, our AI platform and assistant for engineers, so that every drawing report calculation becomes part of a living interconnected network that you can leverage and actually help assist you in your work. Thank you so much for watching. Check the links in the description. You will find the collab script if you want to dive a little bit deeper. I'll see you in the next video.